Hey there, pre cal kids. Today we're going to learn about 6 1 vectors in a plane. Okay, first things first, we got to learn about directed line segments. And you guys are probably learning about vectors in physics. And I'm getting slobber all over the table. <laughs> Magic trick, okay. Well, anyway, no, we really are going to talk about vector safe. You can't tell there's a special guest appearance on this one. Um, this right here is an ordered pair, right? And yes, I would draw this picture and make it noteworthy, guys. Because this is a vector, right? That's a vector. Okay? These, with these crazy brackets, are components of a vector. Okay? A vector denotes direction and magnitude. Okay? So this is magnitude. Magnitude is a fancy term for length. Okay? So it gives you a direction, a length, and an ordered pair. Okay? Anything too scary? Again, you've probably, a lot of you guys have seen this before with a, some ghost probably showed you. Okay. So, when you, and you can add this to your original slide, guys, if you want, like your original, uh, your original note-taking thing you did. Pretty much what you need to know is your terminal point is your end. So this is your terminal point. And your initial is your beginning. And we usually like that to be at zero, zero. Okay. These are equivalent vectors because they go in the same direction and are the same length. They just have different starting points. Okay. And here's a formula which I think is kind of obvious. It's just if you want to find your original vector, you go negative 1 minus negative 4, which is 3. 6 minus 2 is 4. Next slide. The only noteworthy perks were these, these guys. Okay, magnitude is important. Magnitude is the length of the line, okay? So to find your magnitude, also denoted by, if your vector, you know, is, I don't know, 3, 4, then your magnitude of V is, well, you plug it into your distance formula, okay? Your x, y coordinates. If it's just from the origin, this is no more of the guys, it better be. Then you just do square root of a squared plus b squared, because we do 3 squared plus 4 squared equals c squared, which is our, our you know, it looks like this. So really, we're just using right triangle trade, guys. 3 squared plus 4 squared equals c squared. And I already know c is going to be 5. Just because it's a 3, 4, 5 triangle. Okay? This is your distance formula. This is your Pythagorean theorem. You guys know all this, right? Okay. So let's find the magnitude of this beast. So we set up our square root of our x1 minus x2 plus our y1 minus y2, right? So I take my p coordinates, I plug them in 3 minus negative 4 minus, take my q coordinates and I plug them in 5, 2. I'm, go I'm going rapid fire, guys. These are both squared because you've seen this before. Okay, so we get square root of negative 2 squared plus negative 6 squared, right? So you get square root of 4 plus 36, so you get square root of 40, okay? Also known as 2 root 10. 
So that's our magnitude, okay? So that equals our magnitude of V. That's, that's the sign for magnitude, it's like the absolute value sign. I know if you're gonna say they're reusing all these symbols, but it's, they don't answer the lines. Their mathematicians are nuts. Okay, I gotta check time on all the time in the room. Okay, vector addition, scalar multiplication. Here's what I want you to write. Here's the noteworthy part. When you add two vectors together, write this part to you. U equals this. V equals this vector, u plus v equal, you just add your x's and add your y's, guys. There's n there's no tricks to this section. I'm not trying to be tricky. Okay? And the product, the scalar of vector u is, if you take some number times it by u, you just times your x and your y coordinate. Now, it, nothing tricky here. Nothing up my sleeve. I rolled up my sleeves. Okay? So I'll give you a second to write this, think about it. I'm going to look at my window. Let's do an example. Suppose u equals 2, negative 1, v equals 5, 3. Okay? So first, let's find 3 times u. Let's make u red. Okay? So we're doing 3 times u. Well then what I do, I'm going to plug in my u, and all I do is I go 3 times 2 and 3 times negative 1. So what I get is 6, negative 3 is what 3 times u is. Okay. Now I'm going to add that to v, and v is 5, 3. Right, that's my v, this is 3u. All I do is add my x's, 6 plus 5 is 11. Add my y's, negative 3 plus 3 is 0. Okay, you got it. Good, great, grand. That, now I'm stuck in my carpet. There we go. Let's talk about the unit vector, guys. This is where it gets a little trickier. I'm going to pause. When a vector equals 1, um, like when you add its distance is 1, its magnitude is 1, that makes it a unit vector, okay? So right here is noteworthy. If your magnitude of u is 1, then it's a unit vector. If it's not a unit vector, to make it a unit vector, I'm going to show you what to do. Okay, you can make a unit vector in the direction of v. So this was your noteworthy piece. So we have to find the unit vector in the direction of v for 2, negative 3. Okay, first you find the magnitude of v. Okay, since this one starts with the origin, it's easy. It's square root of a squared plus b squared, right? So the square root of 4 plus 9 which equals square root of 13, okay? Now here's what you do. Ready? Second, your unit vector, your uv, and we're going to denote it as u equals 2 over root 13, comma negative 3 over root 13. Because the magnitude of u equals 1. And you can test it if you really want to. Because what you're going to get is this over 13 and this over 13. You'll get 13 over 13 when you do it that way. Okay? That's all you do for a unit vector, to find the unit vector. Okay? I love linear algebra. This is one of the first things you do for linear algebra. Okay. One more thing I'm going to give you. Um, this is called resolving the vector. What this is, 
is you know the direction and you know the length. Especially with like if you're looking at fluid fields, uh, uh, air fields, you're going to know which direction it's going in and you're going to know the magnitude, the speed, but sometimes you want to get the ex exact coordinates. Okay, so this is what you use. Um, back in my day, what we used to do is, you know, if that's your vector, if you want, you would use this angle and use sine, cosine, tangent, right? Sine and cosine to find, or use your magnitude to find your opposite adjacent. But here we have a handy dandy formula, okay? If you forget this formula, if you forget it, you can always use your, your trig. In fact, I, I would like you to do one with the trig for fun. Let's do an example using the formula. Okay. Components of the vector V with direction of 120 degrees, magnitude of 8. So we're looking for an xy coordinate. Well, what's my equation? Well, it's my magnitude times cosine. This cosine is my x. So it's going to be 8 times cosine of 120 times, or comma, 8 times sine of 120. That's all there is to it, guys. Plug that in your calculator, which I don't have on me, so you got the calculator. So it's going to be negative 4. <laughs> Negative four, six point nine, right? And those are my components of my vector. Ta da! Hope you guys enjoyed it.